best of preparedness. Training the best for the worst. Proper grounding and bonding procedures should be used any time a flammable liquid is transferred from one storage location to another. OSHA and NFPA classify a liquid as flammable if it has a flash point at or below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The National Fire Protection Association, NFPA 77, reported that bonding is done to minimize potential differences between conductive objects and grounding is done to minimize potential differences between objects and the ground. The grounding and bonding practice is recommended to reduce the impact static electricity can have on igniting flammable liquids and their vapors. Due to the life-threatening dangers present during the transfer of flammable liquids, hazmat personnel ground and bond the equipment involved during the offloading and transferring process. This temporary grounding system will create a safe work zone where responders are protected from static discharge and sparking caused by differences in electrical potential. This zone will minimize the chance for product combustion. In this scenario, a tanker truck carrying flammable fuel has overturned and is damaged. The fuel the damaged truck was carrying must be transferred to a recovery tanker. Local first responders have arrived on scene and are preparing to transfer the fuel. The dangers within this scenario include the natural presence of electricity and the uncontained and unmanaged flammable liquids and their vapors exposed to the surrounding environment. Additionally, opening domes and valves Connecting hoses and creating connections between the containers and the pump pose a danger for static discharge. To mitigate these dangers, first responders must create a safe work zone. To create and test the safe work zone, first responders utilize a grounding and bonding kit which includes a ground resistance tester. Responders begin the grounding and bonding process by establishing three separate static grounding systems one for the damaged tanker, one for the recovery tanker, and one for the transfer pump. As each zone is established, responders should conduct ground resistance testing using the electrodes and resistance tester in their grounding and bonding kit. After achieving the acceptable resistance, responders will connect the tankers and pump to their grounding system by connecting a grounding cable to the distressed tanker first, then to the recovery tanker, and finally, to the pump. Once the safe working zones are successfully created and tested, the hoses are connected to the pump and tankers. Responders then begin the transfer process. When the transfer process is complete, the grounding system is disconnected. All connecting wires, grounding rods, and other equipment is removed and returned to the kit. As responders establish each grounding system, they begin with a damaged tanker as it poses a greater risk due to potential escaping vapors and leaking flammable liquids. They then repeat the process and establish the grounding system for the recovery tanker and the pump that's being utilized to transfer the liquid. Each grounding system may require more than one rod placed three to six feet apart and connected with jumper cables. Additional factors for responders to consider include soil temperature as an increase in temperature decreases resistance, moisture and salt content as additional moisture and salt content decreases resistance, and the responders should also note locations of underground lines, pipes, and cables. Responders begin with inserting right, grounding rods. Grounding rods are typically placed uphill, upwind, and outside the hot zone. Each grounding system should be a minimum of 10 feet apart. Additionally, the deeper the rods are placed, the less resistance. To determine if a safe working zone has been created, responders conduct ground resistance testing or fall of principle three-point measurement. Insert the auxiliary test Z electrode a few inches into the ground and 50 to 80 feet away at a location that is central to the three grounding systems. Insert the auxiliary test electrode Y a few inches into the ground at a distance approximately 30 to 45 feet from the first ground system for the damage tanker and in a straight line with the Z electrode. Connect the test wires to the grounding rod or rods. The electrodes and instrument is shown. 
Press and hold the test button until reading stabilizes to measure the resistance. Readings should be below what is deemed appropriate by your local authority, but the goal is to always aim for zero ohms. Repeat each step for the other two grounding systems. After achieving the acceptable resistance, responders will disconnect the meter and auxiliary rods Y and Z and connect the tankers and pump to their respective grounding systems. Once a safe working zone has been established, responders connect the tankers and pump to the grounding systems in the following order. Connect a grounding cable to the distressed tanker first and then to its grounding system. Connect a grounding cable to the recovery tanker first and then to its grounding system. Connect a grounding cable to the transfer pump first and then to its grounding system. Connect a bonding cable to the distressed tanker first and then to the recovery tanker. Connect the hoses to the pump and tankers and begin the transfer process. Once transfer operations are complete, transfer hoses are disconnected and valves and or domes are secured. Then, the grounding system may be dismantled and returned to its kit. Responders should be aware that volatile vapors may still be present on or around the empty damaged tanker. Grounding and bonding are a paramount part of the process in ensuring the safety of first responders during the transfer of flammable liquid. Resistance can be impacted by many factors included but not limited to depth, moisture, and salt content in the soil. The transfer of liquids should not take place until a reading below your local authority's threshold has been obtained. This has been a CDP response short. Be prepared. Be safe.